Hi everyone, my name is Jen, I'm an author and a book reviewer and today we're here for a book haul. You know what a book haul is, I'm here to talk to you about all the books that I bought recently. A few of these are books that I, well I wasn't given for my birthday but I got a book voucher for my birthday so a couple of those were bought with that. I bought a couple of other books myself and I've been sent a couple for review as well. So let's dive in. Everything that I mention I will list in the description box down below as well. So let's start with the books that I bought with uh, a gift voucher that I very kindly got for my gran for my birthday and she sent me a voucher and I went onto the Waterstones website because um, it was one of those vouchers that you could use at lots of different places but one of those was Waterstones so I went on their website and there were three books that I had my eye on and it turned out when I went to check out that I also had a £10 credit. Now I don't know about you but whenever this happens to me I feel elated and conveniently erase from my memory the fact that I have this credit because clearly I have bought plenty of books beforehand and this is via book points. It feels like finding £10 in the coat of your pocket, the coat of your pocket? The pocket of your coat that you forgot you put there, but it's really not like that, is it? Anyway, I had the voucher from my birthday and I had the £10 credit as well. So these three books cost me a total of, I think it was 97 pence and that pleased me greatly. So what are the books? The first one is one that I I may regret, but I really have ummed and ahed about this and decided to try it. So this is Miss Ice Sandwich by Miko Kawakami, which is translated from the Japanese by Lewis Heal Kawai. Now, this is part of Pushkin's Japanese novella series and they were published quite a while ago now with beautiful covers which look like this. This has been reissued with a new cover but I've read a couple of the other books in the series including the Hiromi Kawakami Record of a Night Too Brief. I tried to buy this years ago and can never find a copy of it in a shop and I've since tried to read Breaths and Higgs by Mika Kawakami and didn't love it. I read Heaven by Mika Kawakami and found the representation of disability really problematic and also just a bit sentimental and everything was a bit too neat but I still want to read this book. Uh, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment, I really don't know but it, it's very short as well so it's it's not like breast and eggs is what I mean. Like I can decide whether or not this is going to be for me and, and read it quite quickly and hopefully it's something I'm going to enjoy but if I don't it's not something that I've invested a huge amount of time in. What is it about? That would be helpful. This is about a young boy who is infatuated with a woman who runs an ice cream stall and he is obsessed with her blue eyeshadow and he keeps going back to her every day just to watch her make these sandwiches and give them out to people. He is um, going through a lot of things at home with his grandmother's illness, I think, and he's also got a, a friendship that seems to be on and off with someone at school. So this, this point of reference, this woman is something that is very stable in his life and he gets reassurance from watching her do her job. So I like the sound of that. I really hope that I like this book, but um, we'll see. The other book, or one of the other books I got, was Watching Women and Girls by Danielle Pender. This is a short story collection that's been on my TBR for quite a while. And when I say TBR, in this case, I mean a TBR of books that I have not yet purchased. Obviously, I also have a physical TBR of books that I already own and have not yet read. I should really differentiate between those two things. So this is a short story collection and all of them look at how women are observed by other people in various different scenarios. It says, a wedding day brings back memories of sisterhood and betrayals. A motorway services burger bar is a site of explosive violence, but also strange bonds. A trip home forces a reminder of a life-changing lost friendship. A woman confronts her own infidelity and artist celebrates a life spent in observation. I really like the premise and how this very loose theme is tying everything together. I think that sounds really effective. And another short story collection that I purchased was Shoko Smile by Choi and Young, and this is translated from the Korean by Sung Ru. And this is about various different friendships and relationships within families. The blurb doesn't give away anything too much. One of the stories is about a Korean girl and a Japanese girl and their friendship unfolding over the course of 13 years. Another story is about the parents of a teacher killed in a ferry disaster who hide her death from her ailing grandmother. Others are about friendships falling apart, family arguments. It just sounds quite slice of life, um, focusing on the intense moments of specific connections. And again, I really like the sound of that. So those are the three books that I purchased with a voucher I was kindly given for my birthday. 
Then I have been sent a review copy of this book here, which is called We've Got This, Essays by Disabled Parents. It's edited by Eliza Hull. I was asked last year if I would read this to blurb it, but as you may imagine, I was not really in a position to be, to be reading a book like this at the end of last year, so I declined, but I'm looking forward to reading this now uh, and reporting back. It's full of people I love, like Nina Tame and James and Lucy Catchpole, um, uh, Kathy Ray, Rebecca Tausig, lots of people who I know and love. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this uh, and um, feeling empowered by all of these fabulous people. Fabulous, fabulous people. Then we have two middle grade books that I have been sent uh, and both are by disabled authors whose work I have adored before. So we have Lizette Orton. She is the author of The Secret of Haven Point. Yes, I was just checking my bookshelf. I had a moment thinking, that doesn't sound right, but that is right, which is about a group of disabled kids who live in a lighthouse. And this is called The Stickleback Catchers, and this one is coming out in the spring. It is about a group of friends, and I think one of them's gran has dementia. So it's about, I think, friendships being a distraction and comfort during a difficult family time. It says Mimi's gran has started forgetting things. There are cracks appearing all around their home and a mysterious black crow, both of which only Mimi seems to be able to see. The stickleback catchers begin piecing the magical clues together, which one by one might help them to close the cracks and bring gran back forever. So this just seems lovely. And also judging by the illustration on the front, we've got disability representation as well. And then the other book that I have here is Elle McNichols, Like a Curse. This is the sequel to her middle grade fantasy book, Like a Charm, which came out last year, which is about a girl called Ramya who has a fabulous collection of colorful berets. She has dyspraxia, she lives in Edinburgh, and she has access to the magical, underground of Edinburgh where all of these magical creatures live um, and she went on an adventure last time and she had to do a lot of saving and this one I don't know what it oh this one is set in Loch Ness it says that Rami is frustrated because she's supposed to be learning about witchcraft but she is stuck in Loch Ness while Edinburgh falls under the control of a terrifyingly powerful siren and her aunt Opal is trying to teach her magic but it isn't going as smoothly as she hoped. That one is also coming out in the spring. A finished copy of one of my most anticipated releases landed on my doormat. This is Ayabami Adebayo's A Spell of Good Things. This is about two people, Woriella and Eniola, whose lives collide, their families have to deal with obsession and political corruption. And I don't no more than that, but I am going to be reading it in February because I'm reviewing it for Toast and I'm looking forward to getting to it. And I think that this cover is absolutely beautiful. Now, in the last book haul that I did, I said that I was going to be good and I was only purchasing one copy of Beisoir's books, uh, one book by her that I hadn't yet read because I'd read a couple and really loved them. But then I accidentally did purchase one more, so please do forgive me. And that one is North Station by Beisoir, and this is translated from the Korean by Deborah Smith. I justified purchasing this one because the other one was a novel and this is a short story collection. So, I mean, I'm just making excuses, <laughs> really. I should have bought the one and then read that one and then bought another one. But anyway, this is a short story collection by her, which just sounds fantastic. And I say it sounds fantastic. The blurb doesn't give much away. I just love her writing style. It's a combination of um, stories influenced by German writing that she has read and also translated and Korean storytelling as well. It says that Korean and European stories combine in a way that's unforgettable and mesmerizing. So yes, not too many concrete things talked about in that blurb, but I've read her work before and I've loved it. So it's going on the shelf. Another work in translation, which is a book that I showed a couple of months ago, I think this is a finished copy that I have been sent. This is Voyager by Nona Fernandez, and this is translated from the Spanish by Natasha Wimmer. When I mentioned this in um, the last haul, the proof copy, a lot of you commented saying that you really, really love Nona Fernandez's work, or you really like the sound of it, were intrigued by it, would like to read it when it came out. So this is autofiction. So it is part memoir. It's also commenting on political situations. It says, weaving together the narrative of her mother's illness with stories of the cosmos and of her country, Fernandez braids astronomy and astrology, neuroscience and memory, family history and national history into an intensely imagined autobiographical work. And then also this is published by Daunt Books and they sent me this 
as well, which seems to be a, a much more uh, light-hearted read. This is Dog-Hearted, Essays on Our Fierce and Familiar Companions. I mean, obviously I'm going to enjoy this. So we've got essays by writers who love dogs. We've got Cal Flynn, we've got Esme Wei Jen Wang, we've got Charlene Teo, uh, Jessica J. Lee, Ned Bowman, Evie Wilde, Nina Mingy Powells. Lots of pieces by writers whose work I've read before and really loved. So here's a collection of essays about why dogs are important to these specific people. That's right up my street. Another short story collection that I have been sent for review is Hit Parade of Tears by Azumi Suzuki. This is translated from the Japanese by lots of different people, by David Boyd, Sam Bett, Daniel Johnson and Helen O'Haran. Um, I guess because they have each translated individual stories. Let me read you the blurb. This one is coming out in April. It says, a philandering husband receives a bestial punishment from a wife with her own secrets to keep. A music lover finds herself in a timeline both familiar and as wrong as can be. Idle high school students find adventure in another dimension but aren't all that impressed. A misfit band of space pirates discovers a mystery baby among the stars. I mean, that sounds like the one that uh, I am most intrigued by. And Emma, the Bovary-like character from one of Suzuki's stories in Terminal Boredom lands herself in a bizarre romantic pickle. I'm, I'm never sure what I feel about including work with characters in another book that I, you know, haven't read and that other readers won't have read. We'll see if that, you know, stands on its own two feet. But her writing has been compared to Ursula K. Le Guin. So let's see how I get on with this one. Two more translated bits of fiction. We've got here Blue Hunger, which is one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I mean, every time I see this, it reminds me of Latvona by Atessa Moschweg, but really, if you look at it closely, it doesn't look like that at all. But it's the blue and the dark background and the, the body here that is lying very limply like the sheep is on the cover of that book. Is, I'm, I'm hoping that other people are, are seeing this too and aren't thinking that I am somewhat losing my mind, but this is a novel which is called Blue Hunger. As I said, it's by Viola de Grado. I'm looking at the press release in case you're wondering where I'm looking. And it's translated from the Italian by Jamie Richards and it's set in um, Shanghai. It's about two women. I'm not sure if they're in a relationship. I will read it and find out, but they are in an apartment in Shanghai and they're taking small yellow tablets to make all dangerous things seem safe because they're running from turbulent and disturbing pasts and that's all I know about it is all I want to know about it so that one is going on the shelf and the other translated one that I have is this one from Tilted Axis Press. This is Chinatown by Tuong, translated from the Vietnamese by Win and Lee. This is about a woman who is on a train and a bag has been left unattended and I think this is flagged. And while she is paused and the train is paused, she is thinking about all of her life, just all of her life while she's sitting on this train. And I just, there's something about that premise just really intrigues me and for some reason I find really comforting. So I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. Um, finally, before I hold up a pile of books, I'm gonna talk about another time I purchased this, which is Charlotte Eichler's new collection called Swimming Between Islands. This is her first full length collection. And I would just say, if you like my poetry, you're probably gonna like Charlotte's poetry as well. We explore similar themes of folklore and the sea and forests. This says that it has its own distinctive weathers, atmospheres and faunas, egg collectors, moth trappers, hermits, cuttlefish and pajama sharks. So yes, I'm looking forward to reading this one too. Now finally, I don't mean to be a tease, but I'm including these without really including them in this video because I realised if I don't put these books in a haul video when it comes to the end of the year and I'm doing all my stats and calculating how many books I've read and how many books came into my life and all of that stuff, the numbers will be wrong because if I don't include these in a haul, will get left off, but I'm not gonna tell you what they are because they're for a secret TBR video. I mean, I will tell you what that video is. This year, as I did last year, I plan to do a reading booktuber's favorite books of the year video. So I have bought six books that I saw on um, booktubers who I watch favorite books of the year videos. And this is the pile of books here. Um, there are six of them, as I said, and I will be filming that vlog in the coming months, so I will talk about them then. You may be able to guess what this one is at the bottom. I'm being very ambitious with this. This bottom one is uh, over 700 pages. 
which is a rarity for me. I don't normally read books that are that long, but I am very excited about all of these ones and I promise to be less of a pain and talk about them in a vlog soon where I'll be reading them and reporting back to you, which is actually more helpful than just including them in a haul in the first place. So yes, note to self, six extra books hauled this month. All right, I would love to know what books you have purchased recently or have taken out from the library. Let me know in a comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these or if any of them you are now intrigued by because you have seen them in this video. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to subscribe to my channel, that would be lovely. And if you like my content and would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be very kind. Link to that is in the description box down below. Support over on Patreon means I can keep making free content for everybody, taking the time to make it accessible and all of that good stuff. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you for another video next week. Lots of love. Bye.